Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Juice. So, a couple of people have commented recently that uh, the Spitfire is so hard to taxi and take off with. And uh, I'd have to agree with that. And uh, a lot of my friends that recently picked it up have, have, have had issues with it. Whoa, don't turn. But uh, I thought I would shed some light during our World War II uh, emphasis this month on some tips that I use to make the Spitfire a little bit more palatable for flying. So let me get into the uh, cockpit and I'll show you what I've got going here. Let's get some sun on this aircraft. There we go. Nice. All right. So I've got the control indicator up. Now, two main reasons that this aircraft, well, three main reasons, this aircraft is so hard to taxi and handle on the ground during landing and takeoff is it's a tailwheel aircraft. That's number one in tailwheel aircraft are inherently unstable. Uh, as a matter of fact, my, uh, my friends that fly tailwheel aircraft in the real life say that uh, they uh, tailwheel are pilots, the real pilots, the tricycle gear pilots are just training. They call them training wheels. Uh, I have about 10 tailwheel landings on my own that I, and I have seven of them that I count <laughs> as good ones. <laughs> so, uh, so I got lucky. Uh, that was in a Piper J3 Cub. So the second reason, and if you guys, uh, if you guys get a chance, watch that documentary, Spitfire, the plane that saved the world. Uh, it is so enlightening about the Spitfire development all the way through the 24 marks, uh, and it uh, feature it starts off through the history of it, and it is a wonderful documentary, very well done. I hope to see more like that. If you guys have any other cool ones like that that uh, feature other aircraft, put put them in a the link to uh, comment, and I'll prove it and put them on the channel. So the second reason is if you look at this undercarriage, the landing gear has a narrow wheel set. Uh, that width, the width between the two wheels, is probably narrower than almost any airplane in DCS world. If I taxi up a little bit and just turn, you see how the airplane wants to wobble. There's so much weight out there on the wings, on these elliptical wings. But look how narrow that is. So you've got to be mindful of what you're doing. Everything has to be done with intent when you're taxiing around. Uh, so you just got to think ahead, stay a couple seconds ahead of the airplane. Now the second reason is. Here's the brake handle right here. Now this right here, I have both brakes set. I have it locked out. And that is a pneumatic actuated. There's a couple cylinders in the airplane on the left side of the fuselage inside the airframe that feed the pneumatic system that does the brakes and also the flaps. If you see here, flaps are going to go down and then they're going to come up. And you can actually hear it when you have the sound set just loud enough. I have it turned down so you guys can hear me talk. But you can actually hear the and the pressurization of the system. Same for the brakes. When I ran it, but I'm going to go ahead and set this. Now, what I did is instead of putting it to the pedals, I put it on my yoke. I'm sorry, on my uh, Warthog joystick on the paddle switch. Now, it this is a slider input. If I map this to a slider. If you have a slider to put it on, that's even better because then you can graduate how much you want. But then you're gonna you're gonna need to go back and forth. And I don't know if any flight companies are making uh, wheel columns like this for the uh, for the World War II airplanes that have this because this is pretty cool. It would be cool to have one of these between your legs with the gun switch. Now I have. Let's go ahead and I'll unsafe the guns. One of the things I'd like to throw in here is I have the Warthog, Thrustmaster Warthog, and I have right below the pickle button on the joystick, I have a knurled handle. And if you push on the top, that shoots the machine guns. If you push on the bottom of that switch, see it going in there on the, in the center? That shoots the cannons. And then if you squeeze the trigger, you shoot both guns at the same time, both weapons at the same time. So I just did that for the trigger, and then that push up, push down to match that. So I, that switch that I have it to. But on this brake switch, let's get back on the thing. You can see my indicator there. On this brake switch, what I do is I just pump it when I want to move around. So let's go ahead and look around us. Let's see if anything's around. And let's go taxi. So we're going to taxi, and then we're going to take off. Now, before you take off, go over here to your wheel, your trim wheel, rudder trim, and go ahead and turn that all the way to the right. Now the manual and other things that I've read online say turn it all the way to the right for takeoff. I typically get good success from turning it back to where the port is straight up like that. You see that down there right here. 
I turn it back to that level and it seems to do good for me. I have takeoff assistance turned completely off in DCS World and I'm using MFG crosswind pedals. Um, they are some of the best pedals you can get out there. So now with all of that done in the cockpit and the canopy is open for safety, I've got the controls indicator up. Let's go ahead and this is what I normally this is what I normally fly at right here. Let's go ahead and lean in a little bit. There. This is my normal view. If you go out, you know, your field of view, see how the trees don't look like they're convex and too far out there. I can see uh, bogeys coming in farther away. But if you look at the pilot on the outside, you can see how close uh, his or her face is to that front canopy arch where the mirror is up there. And I'm trying to mimic that. That's what I'm trying to do. Let's see if I can see my... Oh, I can see my goggles. Looks pretty cool. All right, so what I'm going to do... I'm just going to give a little bit of gas. If you guys are noticing a little difference in your Spitfire sound and my Spitfire sound, it's because I'm using the Echo One Niner Spitfire sound mod, which I'll put a link in the description if you don't have it. You can get it for free or you can get it for donation. I went ahead and donated $5 for each sound mod that I got from them, and, uh, and it's well worth it. I've got four of them right now, the Viper, Hornet, Spitfire, Mustang. So now as I'm turning, I'm just going to pump a little bit. Now as you get turning, if you've got to turn tight, you're going to have to counteract your turn because it's going to want to keep coming around like that and you want to counteract that with the left. And then you can straighten up again. Now another thing that I think guys are having problems with is they're using the power and they're not coming back off the power when they need to. So, All right, so let's see if we can get a takeoff here. I'm going to go ahead and go about one second down nose trim nose down and then let's turn around and get a good line for takeoff into the wind. Wind is very important on these slower airplanes, especially these propeller driven airplanes. It's really important that you use the wind whenever ca capable. Avoid that crosswind. All right. All right, there's the wind sock at our one o'clock right there, just through the canopy. You can see that little orange thing sticking up right there. And we are ready to go, I think. All right. Fuel's on, everything's good, engine's running good and purring. So I'm going to give it a little bit of gas, and I'm letting the airplane catch up. I'm not advancing the throttle anymore, now I'm going to advance it again. And then I'm using the rudder pedals, I'm just dancing on them a little bit. See the, the little line in the middle? I'm going to push the nose over. Now I'm giving it more throttle and I'm using the pedals to stay straight, as straight as I can. Look at this, I'd love to get a butt kicker. I'm going to pull up. And we're airborne. Just a little pull. Gear handle coming up. There it goes. Now that we're airborne and to clear the trees, go ahead and close the canopy. And then I'm going to slowly take that trim out, the rudder trim. Slowly taking it back to, uh, to starboard side, or port side. And then I'm coming back on the power a little bit. And then I'll come back on the RPMs to about 2,800. And then I'll uh, then I'll reduce my throttle, my manifold pressure. And there we go. We're flying. So I hope this helps you guys in setting up your Spitfire. Uh, reach out to us with a comment or a question if you need any tips. And if you'd like to see more content like this with the Warbirds uh, on how-to stuff, I own all of them except for the Mosquito, but I'm very much looking forward to getting the Corsair when it comes out. And I would definitely recommend you head over to Prickly Hedgehog 72's channel or Phil Style for some uh, good World War II content. Uh, Prickly, ask him questions about the Mosquito. He's done a lot of histor historical research. He's got uh, he's a Kiwi by nature, and the Kiwis were, did some pretty famous stuff with the Mosquito. So. Drop, a, drop us a line, guys, in the comments, and we'll see you in the next video. Cheers.